probably about four and a half years ago, I was up in the Northern California um, camping, hiking, and came home and was just doing my normal general things and got really sick, so sick that I didn't get out of a chair for about three days. I didn't eat. Uh, I just slept the whole time. I had terrible sore throat, probably the worst sore throat I've ever had in my life. I knew that it wasn't, you know, just an average thing that would happen every flu season. Um, this was something that I'd never experienced in my life before. I'd never been that sick before. You know, that I was a normal, highly functioning uh, woman that had a job, had a family, had a really great life, and then all of a sudden everything went to screeching halt because of me being sick. I went to the um, hospital was admitted to the hospital, stayed there for seven days, and uh, had five specialists working on my case. They did every test under the sun and couldn't find what was wrong with me. I saw nine different physicians, specialists of many different kinds, infectious disease, rheumatologists, and just tests after test. And a lot of times the doctor would just kind of look at me puzzled and say, you know, I really don't know what's going on with you. But here, take these, and it was usually an um, antidepressant and pain pills. When I stepped foot out of bed every morning, I had heel pain that was so intense. I had plantar fasciitis in the left heel, and plantar fasciitis feels like you have a knife sticking in your heel, basically. And that was the first thing that happened is when I got out of bed, that's what I felt. Uh, moving, creaking. I looked like an 85-year-old woman walking around. Uh, for a long time I wasn't able to talk. Uh, my vagus nerve was inflamed, so I wasn't able to read to my son, who I read to from the time he was six months old, every single night. And I missed that. I missed the ability to be able to do that, to be able to speak. Um, I, w I knew what I wanted to say, and I knew what I wanted to, uh, I knew what people were telling me, or I could comprehend things, but I wasn't able to, to actually communicate or verbalize anything. Um, you know, visit with people that came over. Instead, I had to dictate everything out on paper and, um, you know, like a message board. I had a message board, too, that I would write messages on to my family. I had a, a four-year-old at the time, um, and my daughter was in middle school and high school at that time. And, you know, those were important years uh, for my husband at the time, which um, we did lose our marriage pretty much over this whole disease. Basically, I just researched on the Internet, found a doctor that uh, was Lyme literate because I had the ELISA test that was positive, um, went to him, and basically he did a clinical diagnosis on me first, which was very... Re it was a relief to me. Even though Lyme disease was a big green monster, I was happy that I had a diagnosis. I was happy that I had something to hang my hat on finally. So my change was very dramatic from being very, very chronically ill to basically functioning person. Uh, <laughs> I'll never forget the day that I started really knowing that I was getting well. It was, the, it was the most beautiful and magical day to me still that I've ever had. And that day was like a veil. Somebody had lifted a veil off of my eyes and all my senses were much more rich and deep and clear. I could see very clearly. Um, you know, colors had much more uh, vivid brightness. Um, textures. I could see textures that I couldn't see before. Um, <clears throat> you know, just I felt energy, people's energy, you know. Uh, before it seemed like that was kind of shut off to me that if someone were to come up and give me a hug, it was like I was dead. I, I couldn't feel it. And it felt very warm and um, I could feel the energy. Uh, so it was like it was a light switch came on. And that's, uh, I was able to, again, start to read to my, my son and, and to go out and play in the park, um, 
to ride a bike, um, to do all the things that I always loved to do, you know, and that was especially getting back to be, being a mother, to being a real mother. I mean, I was always a mother, I know that, but to be a real mother again, that was so, that was the best part of it all, is to, to feel that, like I was making a difference again.